another good indicator, and these things tend to all come together, is um, queue length and response time on both the LUN and the storage processor. So all of these performance indicators we've been talking about, you can look at them at different levels. You can either look at them at the LUN level, you can also look at them on the array level. So I tend to start at the array level, meaning at the SP, and then once I've kind of got an idea of where my problem might lie, I start digging down into individual LUNs to determine, okay, which LUN is doing this and why is it doing this. So response time is a good indicator to look at, and this kind of ties in with some of the other things that we're looking at. So if you go and look at, you know, and, and, and when you... When, you, when you're pulling these graphs, you can pull, you know, multiple different indicators up at the same time. So that way you're able to see some type of correlation between these different indicators to see, okay, is my response time spiking up at the exact same time that my cash utilization is spiking up? If that's the case, then that is basically a clear indicator that, okay, my environment is, is engaging in force flushing right now because of the fact that my cash is through the roof and my response time just skyrocketed because now, since the array is not able to use cache, the amount of time that it takes to accept a request and send the response has now spiked, right? So you'll, you'll generally that, that KPI line up with, you know, increased utilization on the SP processors itself or on the cache, right? Uh, another thing that you want to look out for is the queue length, right? So queue length is the basically the, the kind of, you know, a queue, when you think of a queue, you think of a line, right? So where is my place in line? And queue lengths generally tend to be best between, you know, a number of, you know, four and I would say no, no higher than 20, right? And you start seeing that number start to spike. That can be an indicator of, of a performance issue. The, the array, right, is a multi-tenant system. It's got more than one server that's sitting on it accessing data, right? So you can't have every server trying to access the data all at one time. So you, you have this queue that the array manages on when each system is going to be able to, you know, make a request and it's going to be able to handle that request. And so you don't want that number to get higher than a certain number because basically you'll have systems sitting there, you know, waiting for I.O. after it sent a request for an extended period of time. Now, how to bring that number down comes back to, or, or, or you know, not, not necessarily how to bring that number down, but why that number tends to rise up can be for a number of reasons, but it also, you know, they tend to all fall in line with, you know, the amount of stress and you know transactions that are being pushed onto the SPs at any given point in time. So if you've got very high utilization, very high cash utilization, you'll see the queue length will start to climb up. Um, if the array is healthy, then you know the queue length should be no more than you know, four to six or maybe as high as ten if even that. But you can see it climb up you know during times of, of high utilization. 